few weeks back I made a video about this unusual Sony cassette player, and during the course of the video I said the following things. Previously on Techbone. This colour, believe it or not, is what it always was. It hasn't yellowed due to age. It's an unusual colour for Sony. I don't know if they came out with anything else that would match this. Maybe they made it this colour so that when people smoked around it, it didn't look any different. And this prompted dozens of similar comments advising me that this was not an unusual colour, as Sony had used the same colour for their range of sports Walkmans. Which then must mean that either sports Walkman came in this browny mustard nicotine stained teeth yellow, or perhaps this is coming across on camera as a nice bright sunshiny yellow, but then if that's the case it must mean that people thought I'd never seen the Sony Sports Walkman range before, which is a bit of a stretch given that this channel features stuff from the 1980s, especially from Sony. But I've got to think it's that latter reason, and therefore this must be coming across on the video as a really bright yellow. And yeah, there's a lot of things can cause colours to appear different in person than they do on the video. White balance and lighting, all that kind of stuff. Although there were some people who were watching the video who were seeing the colour that I was describing. There is a lot that can go wrong with the representation of a colour in person and then how that colour appears on a printed page or on the internet. I mean, if you've ever tried to pick a paint colour or perhaps wallpaper or the colour of a new car from a printed brochure or a website, it's very difficult to picture what the real thing looks like until you actually see it in person, by which point it's often too late to do anything about it. In the video about this, I used two different cameras as well as downloaded PDFs and photos. And I'm sure they all represented the colour differently from one another on YouTube. But in editing, it didn't look like any of these looked sports Walkman yellow. In the video, to me, this appeared to be perhaps darker than it is in person. More brown. But here now, I'll describe it for the record as a kind of creamy, pasty orange dirty brown fawn colour. It's a really odd colour, the kind of thing that doesn't look intentional. You could imagine this starting off white and ending up as this colour before you then have to retro bright it to get it back to being white. That's what I thought when I first saw this. I thought, wow, that's been out in the sun a bit. But no, that's the correct colour. It's kind of off colour. Colourful electronics products normally stick to very clear and definite colours. This is a kind of in-between colour, neither one thing nor the other. Let's try and figure out what colour it is. OK, so on this I've got the PDF of the Pantone colours, and I've picked the pages that seem to be appropriate for this device. Of course, we're dealing with multiple levels of inaccuracy here, but I'm just going to try and get as close as I can. So let's see which one of these is the same as that. OK, well, starting with these over on the left. No, those are way too bright, too sunshiny. There's one down at the bottom there that looks a little bit close. So one, two, three, five. No, that's still too orange. Let's move across to the other page. Right, so we're looking for something kind of a bit dirtier coloured. Um, almost that one. I think one below it might be good. No, that's too light. That's not a bad match. What's that one? 1375. Let's go to 144. No, yeah, I think 1375 is it. OK, so let's mark that one so we don't forget. Right, so is that the same shade as a sports Walkman? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's have a look. This is definitely brighter than most of those there. There's a, a few that are in the ballpark, but they're a bit too pastely. We could do with something that's more vibrant. If I look at that one at the bottom there, that's about as close as I'm going to get. Yeah, that one. It's not perfect, but from the options I've got, I think that's closest. Yeah, let's pick that one. One, two, three, five. Right, so looking at this through the camera's viewfinder, I can see why those two could get mistaken for each other, because they do look quite similar, really. Yet in person, when you look at this thing here, this is a lovely bright yellow as opposed to the other one, which is a darker colour. But whilst we've got both of these together in the same place at the same time, we should really do a side-by-side -side comparison on the screen. So, do those two colours look the same to you at your end? If they do, I'd suggest that perhaps don't always trust your own eyes when it comes to judging colour representation on your screen. But whilst we've got this one here now, 
I think we might as well just have a quick look at it, see what makes a sports walkman a sports walkman rather than a regular one. OK, so what we have here is the Sony WM35, a really rather basic Walkman. The most interesting thing about it is the case that the mechanism has been put in, because as far as features go, well, other than the ability to play a tape through the headphone socket, there's not a lot else going on here. We don't have auto reverse, for example. We don't have Dolby noise reduction. We don't have bass boost. Yeah, just a very simple Walkman. The only additional control is this one here which enables us to choose between normal or chrome slash metal tape playback. On the back here we've got a clip which can be removed if required to make it a little bit slimmer but I don't think it's going to make it slimline. The headphone socket is next to the volume control on the back here and all these controls feel like they're being manipulated through a rubber gasket. They're quite stiff. I mean, you're unlikely to accidentally move that volume control, for example. And these buttons on the top here, as you push them down, you don't get that traditional click with them. They're dampened in a way. And I think that's because, again, they're being pushed through a rubber seal. Now, the clip on the side here, to get your cassette out, you have to lift that side off there. And there you can access your cassette inside. Now this one is missing its battery cover but you can see it's just running off two AA batteries there. So this mechanism as you see it is I think very reminiscent of the ones that are still being manufactured of course not to this quality but the uh, knockoff variants of this for those modern day personal stereo devices and the reason I say that is because if you look at the layout of the controls on here We've got play facing left, rewind facing right, and that whole layout there and the clickiness of these just feels like it's that same mechanism that we're seeing a lot nowadays in things where they're pretending to reinvent the personal stereo and in reality they've just picked up some off-the-shelf component from China and shoved it in a slightly interesting case, which is pretty much what this was back in the day, although I'm sure the components in this are a little bit better. But there was a rubber cover over here and I opened it up to see what was there but as I open the rubber thing, it just crumbled to dust. It just shows you the age of it. So I don't know if I trust this thing now to be water repellent, but that was the idea. As you saw when we opened this up, this is much like those cases that you get for say a GoPro, because the idea is you've got this rubber seal around here, a rubber gasket all around the outside there. So when that pushes down on there, this then is supposed to click onto there and hold the whole thing together. But I mean, would you trust that now with all the degeneration of the rubber components. I mean, I'd imagine water's going to get in that headphone socket, perhaps into the volume. I'd need to cover that thing up with something. So yeah, I, I mean, you wouldn't go underwater with this, but the whole idea is you could go jogging in the rain. And one interesting feature of this is that it's the first Walkman that floats. That's its most interesting claim to fame. The case is buoyant. So part of the fact it's in this large case is down to the fact that you need a little bit of buoyancy in there. And there's no point me testing the wow and flutter on this because obviously it's getting on in years. Each one that you test would give you different results depending upon how worn out it was. It's an interesting thing to put on the shelf. It looks good, but it isn't all that really. Now back in the 80s when I was choosing a personal stereo my priorities were quite different to those of the sports Walkman range. I was looking for the maximum number of features in the smallest possible size and at a decent price. So something like this just wouldn't do. It had to fit in an inside pocket. Let me just shove that over there because this is the kind of thing that I was using. Something more like that size. A lot more suitable for commuting than a big yellow chunk like this. I was trying to find somewhere quiet to shoot and I found this bench and all of a sudden I've got a, um, a traffic jam of barges. Now, while the idea of me being completely unaware of the yellow sports Walkman range is a little bit far-fetched, the reality is I never saw one in the wild as far as I can remember. I've seen them in catalogues, I perhaps have seen them in shop windows, but seen someone actually using one, I can't recall that. But then again, 
I was in the wrong kind of places. I was just commuting on the train every day. And then when you get home, it's either pitch black or it's raining and you just go in, you sit down and watch the television. I mean, it's not the kind of place where people would perhaps have two Walkmans. It's not an affluent part of the country. Maybe in some places where they've got an active beach lifestyle, people might have been using them. But around here, yeah, never saw one. Now you might be wondering why I've come down to the canal. Surely it can't be to drop this in it to see if it floats. No one would be that stupid. Oh look, it floats. And it's getting away from me, hold on. There we go. Hmm. Let's see if it works. Hooray! I'm not daft though, I did tape up the headphone socket and this side here as well and uh, over that hole of course it's not the kind of thing you do twice Oh and for anyone wondering, whilst it did flow and it does still work it's certainly no longer waterproof you can see the drips on the inside of the window there and on the cassette here as well I think what's happened is the seal around this window has probably gone so I'm going to have to let this one dry out, but uh, I think it'll be all right. So there you go. That was just one example of Sony's nice bright yellow sports Walkman. Now, whilst I don't have any other yellow Walkman, I do have some other items from the Sony sports range, but perhaps they don't look how you would imagine them to. I'll show you this in a future video along with the rest of the collection, but that's it for the moment. As always, Thanks for watching.